The next type of reactions we're going to look at with carbonyls is the formation of amines and enamines. So <clears throat> primary amines, like alcohols, will react with aldehydes and ketones. And they react in acidic conditions. And the product of these, initially, is called a carbonyl amine. So, just like in acidic alcoholic conditions, uh, when you put um, an acid in, uh, in an amine, the amine gets protonated, so you have an ammonium ion. That ammonium ion is an acid, and so the carbonyl of our aldehyde and ketone, or ketone, could undergo proton transfer. And the result is now we have our free amine, and we have a protonated carbonyl. The amine is a nucleophile, so I can undergo a nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon, and the um, carbon-oxygen pi bond uh, electrons go to the oxygen. So the result is uh, this species, where the nitrogen has a positive charge, because it has four bonds to it. So uh, you should, by now, uh, expect that if we deprotonate this, we can get to our uh, neutral compound. And so certainly deprotonation by a primary amine uh, leads to this species right here. So the carbon has an alcohol functional group, it has an amine functional group, and we call this a carbonyl amine. Carbonyl amine. Now also like alcohols, the reaction doesn't stop at the carbonyl amine. Like I said, the uh, carbonyl amine is in acidic conditions. So if you notice in that last step, we also regenerate the ammonium salt. And so now that ammonium salt can protonate the OH group, and you form now a species that has a very good um, leaving group of water. That, that water can come off with the um, stabilization from the, the um, nitrogen lone pair of electrons. And we form this. And this is called an iminium ion. And that iminium ion has a resonance structure where the, um, if I take the pi electrons from that nitrogen carbon bond and place them onto the nitrogen, now the carbon has a positive charge. So in the resonance structure on the left-hand side, the positive charge resides on the most electropositive atom. On the resonance structure on the right, all of the atoms have an octet of electrons. So um, the, the uh, resonance structure on the right is going to be the, the major resonance contributor, but the resonance structure on the left certainly will exist. And so we're going to have some character of a carbocation character. This is going to become important later on, um, but <clears throat> the thing with amines is that unlike alcohols, the nitrogen still has a hydrogen on it, and that hydrogen can be easily removed. So what happens is um, a base is going to remove it, we're in, um, um, we, we have an amine present, so that amine can simply remove that proton, and it generates a neutral species. And this neutral species is called an imine. Now, sometimes it's referred to as a shift space. And this is uh, uh, because there's a lot of compounds that um, were, were actually developed by a, a German chemist by the name of Schiff. So if you think about the, um, the three uh, main reactions that, that we've looked at so far, We've looked at hydration, uh, so reacting a carbonyl with water. We've looked at reacting a carbonyl with alcohol to form acetals and hemiacetals. And now we're looking at um, the reaction of alcohols with amines. And this is much more similar to that of hydration than it is to, um, to acetal formation. And if you think back, um, in, in the hydration process, the reverse process of hydration, when I have a protonated carbonyl, that protonated carbonyl in water, water can deprotonate it, 
and the result is you, you generate the carbonyl. So if you think about the structure of the iminium ion, the iminium ion is very similar to a protonated carbonyl. And in basic conditions, which an amine is a base, so we are in acidic conditions, but the conjugate base of the acid is the amine, and so it can undergo deprotonation here to yield the imine. And of course, we regenerate our acid. And so you can see the similarities between hydration and, and um, the formation of imines. Again, this is with primary amines. Primary amines react with carbonyls to produce imines. Now, secondary amines are a little bit different. Um, they produce what are called enamines. Enamines. And if we think about the mechanism of this reaction, we're going to see a lot of parallels between primary amines and secondary amines. So in the first uh, step, we have um, protonation of the amine. Notice in this, uh, in this example, the nitrogen has two R groups coming off of it, which makes it a secondary amine instead of a primary amine. And so uh, we get proton transfer, to generate the secondary amine now, plus the protonated carbonyl. The secondary amine can act as a nucleophile now, attacks the carbonyl carbon, displaces a carbon-oxygen double bond, and we get this, right? And of course, now we can deprotonate this, and we can use the amine to do so, and we generate our carbonyl amine. So notice that you know that that initial formation of carbonyl amine still happens. It still exists. Again, though, we're still in acidic conditions. So the carbonyl amine can react with the ammonium salt, right? That was generated in that that last step. We get proton transfer to give us now a good leaving group that can come off. So the nitrogen has a pair of electrons on it. It can donate its pair of electrons in to stabilize the, uh, that uh, transition state. And you generate the iminium ion, right? So again, here is the iminium ion. Now with, um, with primary amines, they form an iminium ion. And the nitrogen has uh, an R group coming off of it and it has a hydrogen coming off of it. With secondary amines, the iminium ion is formed, but notice there are two R groups coming off of the nitrogen. The key is that for this iminium ion, there are no hydrogens on the nitrogen to be removed because the last step to form an imine was removal of the hydrogen that was on the nitrogen. In this instance, we have no hydrogens on the nitrogen to remove. So instead, the, a base can remove a beta hydrogen that is attached to the carbon. And this is very similar to uh, elimination, the mechanism of elimination. So recall, this iminium ion has a resonance structure that places a positive charge on the carbon. If we think about that carbon as an alpha carbon, any carbon attached to it is a beta carbon. And if that beta carbon has a hydrogen, we can remove that hydrogen. We can use our base, the secondary amine, to remove the hydrogen. And the pair of electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond go to form a carbon-carbon double bond. This is the result. So notice the, that central carbon has an alkene. It now has a carbon-carbon double bond, and it's also it also um, has formed a carbon-nitrogen sigma bond, a single bond. So we have an amine. We have an alkene and an amine. Hence the term ene amine. And that is how you generate enamines. All right. So let's look at an example. Here I have cyclohexanone, a ketone, reacting with a secondary amine, so dimethylamine. Um, we're going to use some type of acid catalyst. It could be 
perioluene sulfonic acid. It could be a number of, of acids. And the product is an ene amine. So um, the carbonyl carbon um, takes on a double bond between it and a beta carbon, and it forms a carbon-nitrogen single bond. Notice the nitrogen still has the two methyl groups coming off of it. That is an enamine.